Hello, and welcome to the Lady Stars Knits podcast. My name is Sarah, and this is my channel where I talk about all of the things that I've been knitting and other knitting-related topics. Um, I have a pretty great podcast for you today and lots to show you today, so let's get right in. I'm going to start with my finished projects. And the first one is right behind me. You will be able to see. It is my pressed flower shawl. It's a pattern by Amy Christoffers, and um, I knit mine out of Neutrogen, single-stranded. Um, it hasn't been blocked yet, and um, so I think that my bind-off is a little loose, but I feel pretty certain that that will block out, because I'm planning on blocking it um, quite aggressively width-wise. Um, so, yeah. That, I'll give you a bit of a better look. It's mosaic knitting. Um, it's knit flat, I guess that's obvious. And it uses a combination of slip stitches, knitting, and purling to create this flower motif, which is repeated um, through the whole shawl. I used two colors of Nutogen, um, Botaniska is this sort of muted teal color, and Viravan is the contrast color. And I pulled out this red, orange, and a little bit of yellow sections of Viravan um, to have in my shawl. I found that the green sections didn't have enough contrast with the Botaniska color, so I wanted to stick to the red mostly. Um, I. I like this finished object. I don't love it at the moment. Maybe my opinion will change once it's been blocked. I've only worn it once. Um, oh, I'll show you the back. So you can really see the variation in my contrast color in the back of this. And also, if I hold it up in front of this window, you can see that it's really light and quite um, airy. Maybe if I hold it up to you, you'll be able to see through. I don't know. Um, I omitted the border, but I knit an extra pattern repeat, I think, before the border. I have 12 flowers. Um, I didn't do the border because I don't like the way that it looks. I. I just think that it sort of interrupts the look of the shawl. Um, I didn't like how some of the flowers were half and cut off before the end. And um, by putting in a flower between, like doubling the number of flowers in a row, it sort of gives a grid-like effect, which I wasn't a fan of. Um, so I just knit one extra row of contrast color and then I did a row one garter stitch ridge or three rows of garter stitch and then I bound off on the wrong side just a regular bind off um, and it's sort of hard to tell how the bind off is going to really look until it's been blocked um, but I don't have blocking pins or blocking mats or somewhere to block this in my apartment so I think I'm going to need to go over to my parents and either hang on their washing line and just put some pegs at the bottom. I think that that would be fine. Um, like hang the flat edge and then peg the bottom so it gets pulled a little bit downwards. That would be fine, but it's raining torrentially today, so I can't do it. Um, or I can maybe, I don't know. I don't, that, I think that that's my best option for blocking. And I want to do it soon before it gets too cold. So, it's definitely big enough. This is my wingspan. Um, and I wore it once out as sort of a cowl. As like a really tall cowl. Um, and it was extremely warm. Now that I'm wearing it, I like it more. But I've sort of been looking at it over the past week or so, because I finished it quite quickly after my podcast, my last podcast, and I just feel like the colors are a bit muted. To me, I sort of feel like it, um, it looks like it's been washed 
a lot and the colors are a little faded. But now that I'm sort of looking at it in the light, I really like it again. Um, it's really, really lightweight. I don't have a scale, but I used one and a half plates of the main color, and I don't know how much of the contrast color I used because I was taking pieces from different plates. I will weigh it when I get access to a scale um, because I'm so curious and I love that sort of data. I have a spreadsheet of how much yarn I buy and the grams and the meterage and then how much yarn I use and the grams and the meterage and I have it tallying so I get updates on how much faster inevitably I am buying yarn than I am using it, um, which has been a really interesting and cool tool. So I'm very excited to weigh this and know. Um, but at the moment I don't know, but I can tell you it feels very light. I was thinking of adding tassels to the end but I would need to, I think I would need to spin the Nutitin in order to add a tassel. I don't think that a tassel of unspun yarn would do what I want it to do, which is sort of to give it a little bit of weight in the corners. Um, but it's beautiful. It's so light. It's really warm. And I think that the colors actually are nice, although I've been having second thoughts about them. I think, I also think that the binding will block out. This was sort of a, an impulsive cast on for me. I hadn't really thought about it much before I cast on, although I knew I wanted to knit it for a long time. It's been on my radar. Um, and I, it's been a very long time since I finished a shawl. I think I, I knit the, I've only made three shawls, I think, to completion. The two Stephen West shawls and my Scout shawl by Florence Sperling, which I love, and I did bring to Scotland. I don't know if you can hear the rain, it's just started raining again quite heavily. Um, I hope that's not annoying, if you can hear it. I also will tell you that I have an audience I'm sitting in front of a window and there are four pigeons all on the window ledge looking at me, probably about three meters away from my face. Um, I'll take a video of it and I'll put that in so that you can see it. But I feel a little bit like observed by the birds nearby. Um, anyway. This is my finished object. I'm very proud of it. It was very challenging to knit with the Nutaden single ply and I didn't, by the end of it, I wasn't enjoying it anymore. Um, so it's good to learn. I think that from now on out, I won't knit with a single ply. I'll probably always have it held double or with a mohair and more likely than not with a mohair because um, after knitting on this and working on other projects with spun yarn, I'm enjoying it a lot more. I think it's it's actually much more relaxing to be able to put a bit of tension on the yarn and not have to worry so much about it. Um, so yeah, that's my review of this. I have a lot of both colors left um, because this really didn't take up very much yarn. And I think that I will get a lot of use out of it in the winter. I've been going through to Glasgow a couple times a week for university and what's been working for me in the autumn as it is the beginning of the autumn is just a very light jacket and a big shawl. Um, so we'll see. I can work this and start working this into the rotation. Although I don't really want to wear it out until it's been blocked because I feel like the edge looks a little bit weird. Um, it's a good pattern. I do really like it. I think that some of my flowers look a bit cross-shaped, but when I look out sideways, I think they'll look more flowery. And my favorite color flower instance is this one, because I think it looks like one of those rhubarb custard sweets. Oh, when I was knitting the 11th one, I was the twelfth one. I thought that I had only knit eleven, and I was so prepared to knit another repeat, 
And at that point, the repeats were taking a really long time. Um, and then I counted and I had 12 and it was over. But I thought that I'd only done 11. And I don't know at what stage I knit an extra one or I went back one in my mind. It was very weird, but I was grateful because I was ready to be done. I considered doing a Pico binding and then I thought, keep it simple. Quit while you're ahead. And I feel great about that. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you the edge because I think that this is kind of interesting. This is the, this is the edge that I didn't carry the yarn up. And then this is the edge where I did. I think that they're both, oh, sun. They're both beautiful and I like having both of them. Oh, there you can see it a bit in the sun. There must be a rainbow if it's sunny and raining at the same time. I'm gonna check. There is a beautiful rainbow, but to show it to you, I would have to show you the view from my window, and I think that that would give you a lot of information about where I live, which I think is a bad idea to put on the internet. So, there's a beautiful rainbow outside. That's very nice. We've had a few of those today, as it's been sunny and rainy. Okay, now I will tell you about my second finished object, which is a pair of socks. Now they're kind of dirty because I wore them the other day, um, but this is what they look like. Ribbed socks. Um, I used West Yorkshire Spinner's self-striping sock in the Robin colorway, and the contrast heels, toe, and cuff is with Malabrigo Sock Yarn in Ravelry Red. Um, I used a slip knot cast on, which is a cast on that I really love the look of. And they're really dirty on the bottom. Two by two rib. If I lean back, I think. Okay, yeah, this is just a very relaxed podcast now. Two by two rib. Um, with a peasant heel, like I, I put the yarn in, um, and then after the I put the yarn in, I knit the next row under it, not in rib, I knit that plain so that it was easier to pick up stitches, and that worked. I did not do that on the first sock, but I learned my lesson and did it on the second sock, and it's invisible, you can't see that, but it made my life a lot easier. So I've already gotten a lot of wear of these. I love the rib. It's nice to not have the stripe pattern be um, broken up by the heel flap and gusset, although I do still like that heel better. So those are my socks. I'll show you, this is the, This is the next sock I'm going to cast on. Uh, I've got down the first one. It's just a um, two, or is it three? Three by one rib with a heel flap and gusset um, and no pattern on the bottom of the foot. And the yarn that I used is by Nomadic Fibers in the color Green Thumb. So it's a their Tweety base. You can see the nips, and the I have the yarn with me, and I'm gonna cast on the second sock. I think I started this in March, and I just kept casting on first socks, and now this is the last single sock. So exciting! Um, I've actually worn this single sock a fair amount, um, so that will be nice for it to have a pair. And that's about all I have to say about this. A uh, twisted German cast on, which is not my favorite sock cast on. Um, I do get a bit of an allergic reaction to this yarn. It used to also happen with the Neighborhood Fiber Co. yarn, but I think that they've changed the dye that they use. 
in the past year or two to be organic. I don't know if it still affects me because I haven't bought any more, but I do have quite a lot of uh, yarn from them. And this gave me the same sort of allergic reaction on my fingertips where um, the pads of my finger would peel and get really sore if I knit with it too much. So I hope that that doesn't happen. I might have to take it slow, but this is probably gonna be like an on the train project or a going out for coffee with a friend project. Um, cause that's, that's, that's a good type of thing for a sock to do. If you've seen my podcast anytime recently, you will have seen me talk about the Roosty Vest by Ella Gordon. It's a traditional Fair Isle design, uh, which came out in the Shetland Wool Week annual last year. And I saw it and loved it and knew that I wanted to knit it. Um, and I went through a pretty intensive process of swatching and photoshopping and swatching again. And last time, or maybe the time before last time, I talked about how I had cast on and knit the ribbing, but it was too big because I hadn't measured my swatches. So I cast on the ribbing again, and now we're here. It's been two episodes later since I've recast on, and I have made a huge amount of progress. Here it is. Front and the back are the same. Um, so, I finished the body and cast off for the, well, it's not even a cast off. I set aside stitches for the underarms and then I um, cast on the steak stitches, which are here, and I've completed the decreases that are needed for the armholes. And, and then that's as far as I've gotten. So, I, for the body, I was supposed to knit two repeats, but I have a very short torso, and my gauge is much bigger than the pattern's gauge. So I did one and a half, and it is more than long enough. It actually does meet the length in the schematic for my size, um, and I also wanted it to be a bit cropped. So it might not even be that cropped, because it's about ten and a half inches from the underarm, um, so yeah, you can see this is where the underarm is, so you can see how much of the uh, chest section that I've done. It's kind of hard because my dress has a, a bit of a, a large sleeve, but if I pull up, you can see that if I place this where an underarm would likely sit, I'm actually quite close to where I would want to start casting off for the neck. Um, I think that I'm going to do one more of the bigger color work sections to bring it up a little bit higher because I want it to be quite close in the neck. Um, and I love this. I think it's beautiful. I think that the colors worked out so well. The yarn is just such a the yarn is just such a joy to knit with. I really, I've just been loving every moment of this project. It's not getting old. I really enjoy the color work, and then I really enjoy the plain rows between the color work. I've been enjoying the steak stitches. I think that this looks really cool. It's gonna kind of a shame to cut it. I might knit a hat with sort of a corrugated ribbing effect in these colors if I have any leftover, um, which could be for me or it could be for my boyfriend maybe if he wants it. Um, yeah, so my belly button is here. So it's going to be well past my belly button. It's hard to show you. But this might be finished by the next time I speak to you. It's on cord because I had to take the cable and needle to cast on the Stephen West MCAL because they're both on 3.5 millimeter needles. 
Um, and I took that with me on the train yesterday. Um, so I just sort of ripped the needle out of, the, of out of this. But I think that that project is actually going to be better on wooden needles, so I will take the metal ones back for this. Um, and I do plan on working, continuing to work on this, even during the MCAL, because I can't get enough. I'm just enjoying it so much and I really want the finished object. I can't imagine, well maybe this is like a huge exaggeration, I just feel like I always want to have some sort of fair isle knitting on the needles because I like it so much. Um, and I'm excited about my next project. It's not like I have an idea, I just am excited to go through the process of choosing colors again, especially now that I live somewhere where it's easier for me to go and look at colors, like the Jameson colors and other sort of 25 gram ball of color options in person, um, I think it's going to be great. Couldn't, I couldn't, there's nothing I would change about this. Um, I'll show you the colorway that it is in the book. This is just the schematic. I think that all of this information is available online on the Ravelry, so I'm not giving anything away. A couple of other patterns in this book that I think are gorgeous. I've made, I made this one. This one is available for free on their website. That was like the hat of the year. There's also these gloves. And isn't it amazing how they got the glove colors, like perfectly represented in the colors of the fire. I think that that's really cool. So anyway, I really have been enjoying having the book. I would get the one from this year, but I don't think it's out yet. Shetland Wool Week ended last week. Um, and I looked online, but the, man, the annual wasn't for sale. Oh, I'll quickly tell you what colors I'm using. For, or show you what colors I'm using for this. This is my color palette. It's sort of hard to show you the darks. So, um, if you go to my previous episodes, I tell you the names of the colors and the numbers. Um, I don't have them off the top of my head right now. But that's my Roosty tank top. I love it. And it'll probably be finished the next time I speak with you. So, all that's left is my final work in progress, which I cast on yesterday. And it is the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. I will put um, a timestamp on screen that you can skip to if you don't want to see any spoilers as a clue when we came out yesterday. So I'm sure that there's, I haven't finished it, but there's, I'm sure there's lots of people who don't want to see it. Um, I'll quickly show you through my yarns that I'm using for it. Um, this is my main color. It's a Surya Alpaca. I don't know the colorway. It's from Sakami Yarns. Um, but it's like a burnt orange with sections that are a bit darker. Um, my contrast color is it's Psyche by Nervous Fibers. It's very local. Both of these are local. I think Sakami is based in Edinburgh. Nervous Fibers is based in Glasgow. This is really drapey. It's an alpaca silk. I don't know exactly what the fiber content is because it, I don't think I was given a skein label that had all that information. Um, but it's just this beautiful muted purple. And then my pops of color are these spin is a spin cycle yarn they're both the same colorway i think it's night watch on their nocturne base um yeah so this is my palette i think that it is really nice from what i've seen the fuzzy yarn and the really drapey yarn amazing the i cord and the fuzzy yarn looks like a little caterpillar so now I will put the timestamp on screen for you to skip to if you don't want to watch any spoilers. 
So here it is. Here's what I've got so far. I've done one, I've done one repeat of the um, part in the box that it says to repeat. My cat is doing something. It says to repeat 11 times, so I've done one of those. And I timed it because I like to... Is that you? So this is one repeat of the part that's in the box that you have to repeat 11 times. And I timed myself doing it because that is the sort of person I am. And it took me an hour and 49 minutes for the first repeat. So I do anticipate this taking a long time. Um, 11 more times, hypothetically, if I don't get any faster, that is roughly 22 hours of knitting in the next week. Which seems like a lot, um, but maybe I'll get faster. The shawl does get bigger as you go, but um, yeah, I mean it's supposed to be a lot of knitting. Okay, I have looped up all of the loopy sections and it looks like this so far. You can really see how shiny the purple is, and I really like it. Um, this is what the back looks like. I'm a little curious about what shape the shawl is going to be in the end, um, but yeah, I think that the fuzziness is really working for the pattern so far. I chose this one as the main color because uh, in the video Stephen said that the contrast color would have a very detailed section later on, so to choose your lighter yarn for that, but I thought I'll choose the one that doesn't have all the fuzz for that. Um, I think that they go together really well, I love it, and uh, yeah, I'm enjoying knitting it so far. I. I really prefer to read from a chart, and I really wish that Clue One was charted because I think it would make it much more enjoyable to read, but um, maybe I'll get the hang of it over the next 11 repeats. Um, yeah, so this is my mystery knit along so far. I think it's really funny. Um, I would, yeah, I just can't get over how well the colors are going together um, and working with a needle that's not metal I think will highly improve my experience. I was trying to knit it on the train and I was like, it was so slippery. Um, so this is probably what will get the most attention from me over the next couple weeks. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to see my progress on that. I don't have any acquisitions to share with you for the past two weeks, which is great. I've just sort of been excited about knitting the roosty vest and it's quite exciting because you use up yarn kind of quickly, so I'm always having to go get a new ball um, and I've been very content with what I have. Um, lots of plans for what I'm going to do next, but immediately I'm just going to work on what I've got plus that sock. And I don't have any plans to buy any more yarn immediately, at least, that I can predict. Um, I joined a knit night in Edinburgh, which is great. Everybody has been so, so nice. And it's been amazing to be able to talk to people in real life about knitting. Um, I guess I also need to say that I'm so thankful for all of the lovely comments on my videos recently. That's why I made this channel. I really wanted to talk to people about knitting and to hear what people were saying because I really didn't know anybody um, in real life who I saw who loved to knit. So I was thinking the other day about how my goal when I made this channel has, has been fulfilled multiple times over 
and I love to read the comments and it's so interesting and amazing and I'm very grateful for that. So thank you if you left a nice comment in the past or if you watched um, and interacted in some way, that's what I'm doing this for. Um, and also to have fun. So that's about everything that I have to talk with you about today. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this. Um, if you're in Scotland, I hope that you're staying dry. And now that the rain has stopped, I think I will go on a walk. So have a great day. Goodbye.